Monday, April 6th, as always, we timestamp everything because, hey, everything's changing pretty darn rapidly. And something we might have talked about yesterday may have completely changed today. So good show ahead today. So we're going to jump into some updates that we found out related to some eviction filings and uh, a few different setups related to a few different courts and how they're handling eviction filings. We're going to, uh, we'll probably talk a little bit about the PPP, uh, the Paycheck Protection Program. If you have not already applied, um, you can do so now. Really, really crazy numbers out there right now. I was watching CNBC today and I saw Bank of America had 177,000 applications already for $33 billion. Um, so 10% of the money that was allocated for this program so far, it looks like has come through Bank of America after a day. So pretty, pretty crazy on that. Um, so most people we know have already kind of applied or have gone through the process. The interesting thing is, is I don't believe as of yet anyone's got money back uh, yet. If you have or if you have any new statuses related to this, feel free to hop on in the comments or maybe we'll throw you on the show today. Uh, curious your feedback, but definitely comment related to that because that's been interesting. Um, you can go back to our Friday episode. That was a good one. It gives you a lot of information related to the Paycheck Protection uh, Program. So all, you know, we did a close to an hour show all related to that. So circle back to that. Um, it, you know, if you have not applied yet, the consensus is if you have a banking relationship or a small bank relationship, reach out to them first mm -hmm. and try to go through them because um, they can just give you all this stuff. And if you don't go to your local bank or I'm sorry, any any bank that you bank with uh, and do and do it that way. You know, Bank of America, for instance, you go online and you apply and then they send you the list of everything that you need. So we're going to we might hop into that for a little bit. And then we also have Mike Shock. Uh, our buddy Mike Shock is going to hop on with us. Uh, in about two minutes as well, two minute warning for Mike Shock, and uh, he'll hop on as well from uh, Silver Costa, and we've got uh, some good topics to discuss with him. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's exciting. It's exciting to hear what's going on with the PPP. It's a little disappointing to hear that nobody's been funded yet. Uh, thanks for the recap, Jason. As Ryan likes to always tell me, um, I'm about to do my little weather report. What I'm seeing in the real estate world, I want to say congratulations to our project manager, Ryan on having his second baby girl. Congratulations. So he's uh, handling that right now during all this. That's crazy. I uh, just wanted to give a quick update. Uh, our company, ERIT Filings, that handles our evictions, they just respond. They reached out to every uh, everybody that uses them and told us who's accepting failure to pay rents and who's not. As of right now, I'm going to give you the quick rundown. This is who is not accepting any failure to pay rent suits for the month of April or any other months. Baltimore City, which nobody should be surprised about, Howard County, and Dorchester County. Uh, the next set of courts, these courts are accepting failure to pay rent suits, but will not process anything until the courts reopen. They'll be placed in a box shelf, will not have a date stamp until courts reopen. And that's going to be Harford County, Montgomery County, PG County, St. Mary's, Cecil, Wicomico, and Anne Arundel. Um, and finally, the following courts that are accepting failure to pay rents, which will be date stamped, but will not be held until courts reopen and assign a court date to complete processing is Baltimore County, uh, AA Glen Burnie, uh, Washington County, Carroll County, Somerset, Frederick, and Talbot. Um, so I think the counties that are accepting them, uh, you probably should file them just to protect yourself for the month of April. Um, you know, just because you file it doesn't need mean uh, does not mean you need to see it through. Um, but at least have your eviction on file um, and be in line when the courts do reopen. Um, that's my quick summary for right now and my nice little weather report. I want to bring in, uh, as Jason was saying, a good friend of ours, Mike Shock uh, from Silver Casa. He's actively involved in real estate local here in Baltimore. Um, his wife's a realtor. Uh, he's done some work with some some of the larger speaking events um, and does have a retail business. So it'd be real interesting to see what he's seeing on all fronts. What's up, Mike? What's up, guys? Thanks for having me. How's no it going? Great. How about yourself? Out there. Beautiful. Day. We should be outside. Yeah, we should. Nice 70 degree weather, 65 degree weather. We should all be golfing, but uh, I guess we can't do that. Mike, you want to give a quick background to who your company is and uh, what you guys do? Yeah, sure. My name is Mike Schock. Uh, our company is Silver Casa. We do flips. We do uh, we're, we're, we have rental properties. We also educate. I, I taught for the national gurus out there. Uh, I am local. I live in Hartford County. 
Uh, like I said, we do flips. We, we've done flips out of state as well. We've done Las Vegas, California, Philadelphia, Maryland, obviously, because we live here. Um, so we, we, I don't want to say we do it all, but, uh, we're pretty involved with real estate. Like, like the guys were saying, my wife's a realtor as well. So we're pretty, uh, family business all around real estate. Yeah. That's, uh, that's impressive. That's absolutely impressive. Uh, so let's just jump right into it. What are you seeing in the flip market right now? Um, and how many properties do you, you currently have online that are up for sale or in the closing process or under contract, um, both buying and selling? Yeah, so we have two properties on the market looking to sell those right now. Uh, I think uh, a couple of weeks ago we had uh, great success. Not also with my wife being a realtor, she had a couple houses where she sold not for us but for a client. She had uh, open houses back when we could do open houses because right now you can't. But she sold two properties in a weekend, had three full price offers on two different houses, so that was great. So I think people are still out there; they're still looking. Are they scared to go in a house or apprehensive to go in a house? Sure, but people still need to move. They're still being relocated. Uh, the real estate world, from what I can see, is not really stopping. On the flip side, a lot of our, uh, when we do our wholesaling, some people are a little bit apprehensive, maybe want to be a little bit lower on price, which I get. But the ultimate thing is uh, I would start building your business now. Uh, start building your teams. Uh, I was once told in business, never stop your momentum. So once the ball gets rolling, never stop it. So if there's any newbies out there that are thinking like, what do I do now? Now's the time to grow your business, guys. It's not really the time to stop and hold back. So build your build your realtor base, build contractors, uh, network with other investors, get on the phone, get on a Skype call or a, or a, a Zoom call and just meet other investors. Uh, what we do now will dictate our future. Yeah. And I think you bring up a great point. You know, everybody always says, oh, where do I find contractors? Where do I find contractors? But Now's a great time to go out and try to find someone. And even if you got a little bit of work at your house and establish a relationship because you know people are going to be hungry. Just a few weeks ago, it was impossible to find every, anyone because they could just go out and get work tomorrow, right? So uh, oh, I think absolutely. you bring a very interesting point with that. Well, uh, do, do, you, do you see the consensus, and, and I believe so, that everybody is the, the – I don't want to say seasoned real estate investors, but just real estate investing as a whole – is it's still very optimistic and there's still deals to be had. People are proactively trying to find deals. Any deal that um, is out there. And again, like you said, someone might've been lowballing you or someone's trying to get a cheaper price on a property and rightfully so, I guess. But at the same time, you know, we're still seeing that pretty much every good deal is still has a home. There's still an opportunity and people still want to continue to buy real estate um, no matter what, at least as of now. Yeah, I, what we're seeing is our lead generation is still coming in. People still want to buy their houses. Like I said, you know, the people still get re relocated. Uh, if their job is relocating them, they have to move. So they need to sell their house. So the opportunities are still there. Um, I know a lot of people are asking, like, when do you see, like, will it be a big uh, fallout like 2008 where you have a lot of foreclosures? Um, I think we all know that it's going to take some time. If it does go that route, it could be a year and a half, two years down the road where the opportunities will be like they were. I don't see that happening anytime soon. So um, I would I was we're still in the game. We're not backing down. Um, there's opportunities out there now. So like we said, people still need to move. And yeah, yeah. I, I, I agree. And one thing that we've talked about a lot is any asset you buy, any property, buy any loan that you lend on, whatever it is there's a good time to buy no matter when it is, right? It could be going up, it could be going down, it could be staying stable. Every deal is completely different. You look at a deal and you say, hey, I'm gonna buy it for $100,000, is this a good price? And if you believe and you've done your due diligence and um, you know, you've done your research, you believe it's a good price, then absolutely do it. Could it be worth 90 tomorrow? Maybe. Could it be worth 80 tomorrow? Maybe. Could it be worth 110 tomorrow? Maybe. And But the bottom line is if you do your research and you have your, your contingency plan, if you can get moving quick on some of these things. Now, obviously, fix and flips might be a little bit harder because you want to get in and out of these quicker. Um, but that being said, you know, I've, we've, I've talked to Ian a lot, like rental properties, great opportunity right now, because until you you're, you sell or trade that asset, it doesn't really matter how much built-in equity you have. Obviously, you want the most built-in equity yeah. as possible, but you buy it for $100,000 and you get $1,000 a month in rent. It does not matter if it's worth 90, 80, 70, zero until you're ready to sell the darn thing. It just doesn't. So, it, you know, if, if you can get in and out of it or you can get in, in on it, obviously you want to make sure you can get 
uh, proper debt on it, longer term debt on it. But in general, you know, if, if the deal works, it works. And, you know, a few a few shows ago, I talked about uh, th this trader that bought Marriott, a lot of stock of Marriott, and everyone was laughing at him. And he was like, you know, I would have dreamed about Marriott at this at this stock price uh, years ago. I've never had it at this price. This is the price I wanted at. Yeah, I might look like a fool because it might go go down before it goes up again. But I'm a long term player and long term holder, and you know, to me, it makes sense and financially, it works. Absolutely, yeah. yeah now's the time to grow your business, and like I said earlier, start networking with people. I, I always think if you come from a place of service and want to help other people, uh, that it'll just come back to you ten ten times over. What um <clears throat> yeah, and that actually brings up an interesting uh, segue into um is what you're still generating leads. So I'm assuming you're doing direct mail or you're doing, uh, you know, web, web gen or SEO type stuff. Have you had to change your message at all or is your discussion with sellers um, changed at all? Uh, yes, it has. It has in a way that, um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll give you a price right over the phone. We don't need to come see it. Uh, obviously, as it gets a bit closer, we would like to put our, our eyes on it, get somebody out there. And what we're hearing that the seller is like, hey, I don't want anyone in our house. So what we've been doing is just virtual tours where uh, we'll FaceTime them or they'll send us pictures and that way we can review it. Obviously, a lot of the flips we do is our full guts anyway. So we, re we really don't care what it looks like inside anyway. Uh, but we right. do like to have a, a good feel for it. So uh, we have to answer your question. We're seeing more of like a virtual type of interview, Skype or FaceTime the the seller with their property send us pictures that kind of thing so we make better evaluations yeah that um that's pretty cool you know because there's a lot of time wasted going out and there there's something we're social beings obviously me and you are um <laughs> i'm ready to go back to tootsies but yeah. uh you know uh the thing is is that most of us are social beings and it helps to be able to present in front of people but you know it seems that every industry has gone to this online zoom you know be live whatever it may be to to uh, conference with people, I'd be interested to see if that sticks or somebody utilizes that to grow a whole business out of it and say, look, I don't even need to come to your house. Just send me a video and I'll give you an offer over the phone. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I'm so. curious to see where this whole uh, business thing is going to take us in the future. Will will most people be okay to go to a stadium with 60,000 people in it or, be, will, or will they be more reserved? I mean, how will this play right. out over, over time? Time. Yeah, and and I and I think from what a lot of people are talking about, which I do agree with, is as we ease back into, you know, we get away from social distancing and we ease back into opening up uh, industries, opening up businesses and stuff like that. Again, I don't think it's going to happen overnight. I think potentially, let's say a restaurant gets back into business, you know, there's only so many people that can be in a restaurant at any given time. On the other side of it, you have a sixty thousand person stadium, which a ton of people, you know, face to face, neck to neck, arm to arm. That might take a little bit more time to uh, to adjust, but in general, I don't know how much of that will really affect real estate because in general, real estate's more of a one-on-one. -on -one. There's not too many people in, in, involved, but you know, a big thing. And I was going to bring this up earlier in the show. You know, April first was a big date, and the reason I think it's a big date, it's the first. It was the first month since all this happened that you know uh, tenants payments are due. Um, uh, you know, mortgage holders payments were due, you know, mortgages are due, rents due, and time's going to tell. And I think by the end of this week, we're going to have a very good indicator of where a lot of our tenants are, um, a lot of our clients are in general. And I heard a really good quote, and I don't know why I keep quoting CNBC, but it's something I watch first thing in the morning all the time, is, you know, it's, it's your business's obligation to pay your rent, to pay your mortgage, to pay your debts, if you have the ability to, and if you can. But on the other side of it, um, it's your it's your lenders or landlords obligation to work with you if you can't if you can't pay your rent if you can't pay your mortgage so that was a message that was clear that I agreed with and I know inside our lending business it's been the same thing you know if, if you have the ability to and you can um, you know make make your payment and if you can and you really need a workout you figure it out because again if you're making rent it, let's you know Ian for instance and Ian can talk about this and actually you can probably talk about this because you have Jay's gone. I don't know where he went. Mike, what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing inside your uh, rental portfolio? To uh, have you seen any difference? Um, have you had any issues? I'm going to text. Well, him it's it's too early to tell what, what issues we're going to have. Obviously, we we are where we are. We use property manager. 
manager. So we're, we're getting the communication now, but we did have our property managers reach out to the tenants to communicate. Hey, if you have any troubles, we need to know, we need to work this through because, um, sitting here and, and obviously you can't evict anybody right now, but not working with people is not the right way right now. I, I heard, um, uh, I'm not going to name names, but a, a, a well-known restaurant. It's like, will they will they reopen? Because the landlord uh, put a big uh, stink about they have to collect the rent, and it's like now this landlord's going to have a empty restaurant versus right. working with the the owner trying to work out you know something over time uh, versus just trying to get them out on the street or not renew their lease. So I, I don't think. It's it's going to help be in anyone's advantage just to be that harsh and someone, you know, work with them versus not. Yeah. No, so what, I, what do you got? What do you guys seeing on yours? You have way more rentals than I do. Um, I, for the most part, we've been good. I don't know if you saw the episode I did with Jason the other day. Our local portfolio has been fine for the most part. Uh, a lot of our tenants are subsidized. So we diverse, you know, our risk is a little bit diversified. <clears throat> we do have a property, a 34 unit we just bought out in West Virginia. Sure. A lot of those. Uh, about half the people that live there work at the casino or horse training or whatever. Um, so we haven't seen any issues of yet. I think the real litmus test is going to be May 1st. Uh, real quick, uh, if we lose you guys, we'll jump back on. Jay's computer froze. You just texted me. Uh, a lot of curse words are coming across the text thread, um, but we'll <laughs> figure it out. Uh, with that being said, um, I just saw an article, a guy, in, you know, a landlord in New York, city is forgiving his rent on 80 units, which is interesting. So you're seeing people take uh, drastic measures on either side, um, which is real interesting. So, you know, and I see Aaron Foster just asked about evictions. If you go back to the beginning of this video, if not, I'll forward you the email, Aaron. Um, there are different levels of evictions that can be processed right now, although I don't think anyone's taking them full term. Um, so, but yeah, it's uh, it's going to be a real interesting time, you know. And what what is what's the uh, impact going forward? Um, I know everybody, and you're a very positive guy, as I am, as a, as myself is. Um, but you know, the question is, what does this change going forward? You know, um, and, and I know Mike, you have a lot of friends across the country. Have you know from what you've done with a lot of the big speaking stuff? Have you talked to any of your people across the country? Have they seen anything different? Yeah, I have. A couple of weeks ago, uh, out in California, they were more in the shutdown mode than we were here. Um, I think a couple of weeks ago when we were on that call, the, you know, Philadelphia being shut down, I talked to a neighbor of mine who sells fireplaces, and he deals with New Jersey, Pennsylvania. And what he was telling me is that if a house is under frame, like a new construction or rehab is under framework, now this is in New Jersey and Pennsylvania, that they're basically shutting down the job. But if if it's under drywall, we're close to being done. They're allowing that work to be done. So thankful in Maryland, we're, we're still doing our projects and that kind of thing. We're not having to shut down because if we have to shut down, I think that's where things are really going to be be bad. If the courts stop recording so we can't do transactions, that's my biggest fear. Yeah, no, we got, we got a closing in the other week. It was a you know 10,000 square foot warehouse that you know was getting sold to a publicly traded company. And we were sweating bullets, you know, just, you know, just more that it's going to happen, right? Like that we could actually sure. record and it doesn't give them more time to make another decision. Say, Oh, you know what? We kind of, we got beat up on our stock. We want out, you know? Um, so yeah, I, I definitely agree with you there. Um, what's your wife seeing on, you know, the realtor side of things? Is she seeing a slowdown or people adapting and doing virtual tours and that whole good thing? Yeah, they can't do any open houses anymore. They can't uh, show houses anymore, but they are doing virtual tours. But obviously, someone's got to go in and either film that or do a Facebook Live. So uh, trying to educate the clients to uh, work with someone coming in to film everything so they can have that ability to show their houses in these trying times. Right. Yeah. And uh, again, that's another another one that I, you know, I wonder if your wife can just utilize that going forward is, you know, getting a buyer's list together and just saying, here you go. I did a virtual tour. You know, we, we talked about, oh, I think Jason is back. There he is. Yes. Um, <laughs> he's back. We talked about everything. It's over. No, uh, we were just talking about uh, what Mike's wife's been seeing on the real estate, you know, the realtor front. And, you know, how how is that whole industry going to adapt to that? Um, yeah, we talked about it a lot that I think people still need to see, feel, and touch their home before they buy it. And I don't think virtual buying will ever go that way versus, you know, buying a new car, it smells pretty and you know what you're getting, right? So, 
Um, what uh, what do you think is going to – and for those that don't know, Mike spent a lot of time on the big national circuits. What do you think is going to happen with that industry? You know, their whole goal is to bring people into a room, you know, say, hey, this is how you do real estate and pitch them. Is there going to be a big change? Not that there already wasn't a big online push there. What, what do you think is going to happen? Yeah, I mean, uh, that whole – that whole world's basically come to a screeching halt because a lot of the speakers uh, and, and seminar companies, if you will, would speak, you know, we would speak in front of crowds of 500, 600 people. And obviously you can't have that many people in a room right now. I know the hotels are dying out there because they had all these events booked and, and everything, you know, from, from hotel food to catering to all that, they're relying on it. Now it's basically all dried up. Um, so, yeah, I think maybe uh, I see a lot of this going maybe online more so than on uh, in presence. So and what, what just to describe it to the people who don't know what I did is is I would uh, teach and speak for a national guru and they would hold events like, you know, where they would do a late night TV and, hey, come to this event for a two hour tour. And then you would, you know, learn from there. But, uh, yeah, th I think those days, or at least right now, obviously they're over. But will they continue? Who knows? I think there's always that that. Um, tactic to to do that but i think it's going to change drastically yeah yeah i'm guessing you guys can still hear me right yeah all right cool yeah i'm guessing that that industry pivots a little bit but there's a need for it there's demand for it and as long as there's a demand for it people are going to still do it i mean they're real estate investors everybody needs mentors they they need they need guidance they need assistance um and obviously in a perfect world everyone would have the price point to get somebody one-on-one -on -one and work with somebody face to face or over zoom or whatever the case is. But you know, the reason why doing it in front of a large stage is, you know, you can, you can touch that many more people uh, by doing that. So I think, I think it adjusts. Um, one thing that I'm seeing right now, and obviously, you know, all three of us have been following like Russell Brunson for a long time and, you know, we're all big into some of the stuff that he does. And I agree with, with a lot of the things that he's, there you go. Is it, did you get that shirt this year? What does that one say? What does that one say? Um, entrepreneurs by birth. Uh, funnel hackers by choice. Ah, perfect. Um, perfect. Yeah, so one, one of the things that I know he's kind of preaching now and yeah, he's selling his book right now and, and I, and I get it, but a lot of the stuff that he comes out with, I, I, I agree with a lot of, but a big thing is, is just like during the time, during these times right now, you know, provide value, provide value to people in, in need. I mean, this might not be the best time if you're in that space, you know, the online sales or whatever space in order to, um, go out and try to get a, get a quick buck from somebody. It's provide them value. You know, this is a good time to get, to get your following because a lot of people probably are, are folding, especially in that space. You know, if that's their whole game was in order to do large events or bus tours or whatever, they can't do it anymore. Then all of a sudden, you know, they're re you know, they're, they're kind of rebooting or they're rethinking or trying to figure it, figure it out. Um, but in general, if you're an expert or a provider or somebody who you have a following, you need to do whatever you can to provide as much value as you can for your audience. This is when your audience needs you the most. They look at you as an expert. And one of the reasons why Ian and I started this show was because we're kind of on the front lines of this and you're on the front lines as well, Mike. I mean, I talk to real estate, I mean, I talk to 30 new real estate investors every day because they want, you know, they're looking for a loan for their, for their project. I'm, a, I'm analyzing them, I'm evaluating them. I'm talking to private capital investors talking to so many people on a regular basis and we all are. So honestly, it's somewhat of our obligation to share that information and help because, you know, if you're a one-off real estate investor and you own a few rental properties and you fix a few pro and you fix a few houses and maybe you're a real estate agent as well, like you're not up to date with all these eviction filings. You're not up to date with uh, this, you know, paycheck protection plan program. You can't be right. Um, you know, you need, you need a sphere to do so. So part of this show has really been to share as much as this information that we're getting on our, in real time with everybody. And, and I think, and hope, and I think some of these larger national companies do the same right now. I think they're going to be better off in the future. They're going to know that they're loyal to their, to their clients and they know that they helped out their clients. And, you know, when the time comes and their businesses are back up and running, I think they're going to be ahead of the game. Yeah. Especially, especially if they started and they have the foundation of serving people and, and that's right. Giving the value. Yeah. I mean, we should I, always get value. So. That's Absolutely. that big keyword that they all like to use. I'm here to serve you, but, but you know, and a lot of people don't, we don't, I would say as real estate investors, we probably don't take advantage of that enough, right? Like direct mail or, you know, your wife being a realtor or us as, you know, selling or flipping or leasing houses, you know, how much value can you provide and bundle in there? Right. And, you know, really make your message match. 
Um, you know, it's something I've been thinking about a lot recently. Now, Mike, I know, I don't know that necessarily you might be the best expert on this, but I'm going to ask you and don't get mad at me here, but this is a great segue to Jim Chivers tomorrow who we're going to have on here, who's a commercial broker. Uh, but me and you've had some deep dive discussions. We might've been, you know, a few beers deep. Um, <laughs> but we did discuss, you know, like RV parks and like I'm alternative sure. asset class types. And I know you have a lot of friends in those industries just from what you've done. Has anybody been talking about that? Or what do you see the future as like the alternative asset type classes going forward? Well, you know, it's funny that you say that because the the history shows that a mobile home park or a mobile home community, however you want to phrase it, when the crash happened before, it really didn't affect that industry because most of those workers worked at, let's say, a fast food joint. So if they're working at McDonald's and they get fired, they walk across to Kentucky Fried Chicken, get hired right away because that labor pool is always needed there. But if restaurants are closed now and suddenly carry it out, that could have a huge impact on that whole industry. Yeah. Those guys are definitely living paycheck by paycheck kind of thing. So it could have a different effect now than it had before, just because the, the, the place of employment where they would work is, is being affected right now. Yeah. I don't, I don't disagree with that. And then, you know, it's the same thing people say with like self storage or uh, you know, industrial space or, Whatever it is, it's going to be real interesting to see. And I'm excited to talk to Jim tomorrow because, you know, office complexes are going to get beat up. And, um, you know, RV parks were popular. I know when we were talking about it, it's because older America can't afford housing stock anymore. And they're going to move into the mobile home park and saying, OK, I'm, I'm good with that. You know, I don't need anything bigger than this right now. Um, and that's probably why it's been so successful. So um, a lot of interesting stuff on the forefront. I, you know, I keep saying it so. Yeah, I think people buying RVs to drive around and it might even rise because uh, it's, it's their own environment versus, you know, like we were talking the other day about Airbnbs. It's like, what's going to be the new standard of having to clean an Airbnb or a rental property or a hotel or, or any kind of uh, vacation place? Right. I see uh, a few comments have come in. Aaron Foster, and I don't know if your wife uses this, Mike, but uh, he's saying 3D layouts on you can get them from Fiverr. I know Matterport's the big one Matterport, that you can do virtual yeah. tours on. Uh, I heard a, you know a lot of people utilizing that. Roxanne Whitaker saying, uh, "I'm going to be a better agent because of this pandemic," and I think we're all going to be better, right? Like we can yeah. all going forward diversify against this in some way, shape, or form, or make our business better. Like I just we were talking before we jumped on here. You're saying, "Hey, my son's you know building a funnel for one of our friends. You know, are you going to be able to start a new business there? You know, so." Yeah, I, I think the online opportunity right now, because everyone's home, is just going to be ginormous. Yeah, I mean, attention spans are available. Or is ginormous. Uh, yeah. You know, attention spans are available. Yeah. This this is the time to do it. I mean, we talk about this every show, but the strong are going to survive, the weak are going to fold, and the ones in the middle, yeah. you know, if you work your ass off and grind, you'll continue to be okay, because that's where it's about. And, you know, real estate will work itself out. Obviously, there's going to be new a new norm related to how real estate's bought and sold uh, if, it, if it doesn't get back to exactly normal. I know a lot of um, closings in general are getting done, everything in general. I mean, real estate's not shut down. And my guess is it's probably not going to get shut down any more than it's not going to get any different than it is now. Because, you know, New York got hit the worst. And, you know, there's still there's still a lot of stuff. There's still a lot of action going on in New York City in general. Yes, you know, we might within the end of this week or next week turn into what Philly did, where, you know, construction's on hold for a short period of time. And when construction gets on hold, that's tough, obviously, for a lot of reasons. Um, and hopefully it doesn't get to that. But again, you know, it, it seems that within, you know, if everyone can kind of hold on for another like 30 days or so, at least in the real estate investing industry, I'm not saying this for, for uh, all the industries, but at least for the real estate industry, I think it's going to be fine. And then the next conversation is going to set is going to be, you know, how does this impact all of us in the future uh, related to, um, you know what they're saying: fourteen percent unemployment, um, uh, you know, past due mortgages. You know, where, where, you know, where does that happen in general? Like, I mean, I guess the good part is, is this this was never really a banking crisis. The banks were liquid. The banks were lending. Uh, good, you know, good uh, credit worthy individuals were still getting loans. Um, and if and if you know they weren't credit worthy, they weren't getting loans. So it wasn't that they were just giving money away to everybody. I know. FHA and, and VA, which seem to have the um, the the easiest credit requirements, have opened up their 
uh, or have up their credit score requirements to try to get a, a little bit higher quality uh, client and in, bar in general. So who knows? We'll see yeah. how that's affected. But as a whole, you know, if you don't believe that you can buy, sell, trade, rent, lend real estate in any market, then you know you haven't you, you haven't prepared yourself the right way. There's always not there's always an opportunity and. You know, I think everybody wanted to run so darn fast and say, and it was kind of a, you know, a big, you know, what contest of who could buy the most properties, who could have the most rentals, who could wholesale the most, who could lend out the most, who cares? You know, the easy answer is, is if you could do one deal a year and make as much money as you needed based on that one deal, then do that deal. You don't need to do anything else. So I don't think it's a volume game. I think, you know, you do whatever deal you can get your you know, whatever deal works for your model that works for your formula, you make the money you want on it and you move on to the next one. Yeah. It's funny you say that because it's like, we can speculate all we want, but I had a conversation with someone, I think yesterday the day before about universities, right? You're paying college kids are paying a lot of money to go to school right now, but all of a sudden now they're online learning. I don't, I don't want to say the same material, but why pay all this college tuition for board and all that when people might go straight online? But yeah. I believe the college experience is, is being there and, and living the life kind of thing, if you will. So there is that I agree But think about it. I mean, if a, if, a, if a college is charging 40, 50 grand a year, maybe a lot of people are saying, hey, I can save money and do it online. Who knows? Yeah. We don't know where it's going to go. Just interesting I agree. conversation. Cool. So, Mike, any, uh, any last words before we uh, let you go? We appreciate you coming yeah, on. Yeah, just a great. Just keep a positive mindset, um, like, like the guys were saying. That, you know, you just got to – if the sky's not falling, how, how do you take advantage of this, uh, this situation and where will you be when you get out? So stay positive. Cool. Bye, Mike. We'll chat soon. Thanks, Mike. Bye, you guys. Cool. Um, uh, any last words that you got, Ian? No. Um, it's good to hear. You know, Mike's staying positive. He's still getting deals done. Um, you know, it's very interesting what his wife's doing and, you know, how they're staying afloat. Uh, I think another discussion that we could have Mike back on about is, you know, his other other business, you know, that's a retail type business and how they're being affected. You know, just real estate investors, you know, we don't really look at ourselves. I guess we are, you know, we're obviously entrepreneurs, but sometimes we don't fall into that class. But I think one of the best podcasts I listen to um, is How I Built This by Guy Raz. Uh, yeah. It's an NPR one. And it just listening to other entrepreneurs and hearing what they go through in their own industries. And I would love to hear from Mike and Russ, you know, to hear how uh, swag dog is navigating it and you know what techniques and stuff we can apply from that side uh, into the real estate world um, and help us uh, all get through it. Yeah. Maybe we'll do another big show come here soon related to, you know, 10, 10 people, 10 different industries and, and, and get their thoughts on, you know, what they're, what they're seeing as well, because not that we're sheltered in the real estate industry because, you know, we've got our hands involved in a, in a bunch of different industries and have money involved in deals and, and things like that. But, you know, a our focus on real estate and the majority of our income and assets are in real estate. And, you know, that's where we're spending our time and our, and our energy and our resources on figuring ways to, number one, keep all of our assets safe. Number two, trying to be opportunistic, but cautious at the same time to figure out exactly what we're going to do um kind of moving forward but you know mike said it as long uh, as well as every single other person we've had on here that you know when the right opportunity comes i'm gonna buy it and i have the resources to buy it and when the right opportunity comes oh, no no there you go you're back uh, i was offline again no only for a half a second you're saying make sure that you you buy that you know if you have the right opportunity to buy it right now um, and that's a very valid point. Yeah, and if you have the time to sell right now as well, you know, we listed a property during all this and we got, you know, above market offer and chances are it was because the interest rates were still low. The guy wanted to lock in and, you know, he needed to settle anyways. And he was, yeah. so, you know, we've been moving, we've been moving forward on it. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's a, uh, it's a great chance. Yeah. I think there's going to be some big boy money out there. That's going to start floating around that they have major cash reserves that they're going to start so hopefully start sniffing out portfolios we shall see uh we're i guess we're gonna find out tomorrow from jim uh what's going on in the commercial world uh, i think 2 30 tomorrow i might actually put on a suit and tie on my butt. <laughs> why right. yeah, you okay. know what? I, was gonna, I was gonna talk about our attire earlier on today because i actually i'm not sure about you because you might actually wear that exact same sweatshirt every day 
Me, on the other side, <laughs> on the other end, I do have about 20 different HMB shirts, similar designs. And actually, you know, Mike hooked a lot of these up at Swag Dog, so I appreciate that. But uh, anyways, I have about 20 different variations, so they're always a clean one. Uh, and I and I try to mix and match hats backwards, at least. But I'll let you talk about your own uh, you know, car, car hard gear. Same, same, same hat, always a car hard sweatshirt, always a car hard shirt. They're on rotation. See my wife's watching right now. Uh, how, many, guess, how many you have on that rotation? I got four. Four on the okay. rotation. The problem is those Christine like do, yeah. does Christine do the uh yeah, so like said, big shout out. She does the laundry. The problem is you got four you got four on the rotation, and then the one day you got your nicest one on, you gotta go do the dirty work. So um, but yeah, no, I haven't Wait, that, So that's the nicest or the the least no, nice? This, this is a beat up one. Uh, okay. So. I wasn't sure. Um, yeah, see, it's got this nice stain right about here. I keep seeing it. it. Yeah, I was going to talk about our tire. Just, you know, this is what we would wear if we were at home or somewhere or at office. I guess you're well, at I, I wear this to all my I'm meetings, so it is what it is. Yeah, so going back to the suit and tie, we don't need a suit and tie. I mean, if you uh, want to. No, I'm know. not going to wear a suit and tie. I might wear a tie just to mess with Jim. But um, he's sure really good he's one. not going to have one on. For anyone that's ever wanted to get involved in commercial real estate, I met Jim a while ago. I always talked about doing deals. Finally cracked a few deals in the commercial world. Um, it's been very interesting. So anyone that has a little confusion, you got questions about it. Um, obviously, we're going to talk about the market first. But um, if anybody wants to deep dive on some commercial real estate, uh, we'll have a bunch of time cut out for him tomorrow. Um, and we'll catch you guys tomorrow. That's, That's two, We're doing 2.30 tomorrow with Jim? I think 2.30. I got a 1 o'clock call. I think he has a 12.30 call. All right. So 2.30 two with Jim. We'll probably go for about 30, 45 minutes. If you have any questions ahead of time for him, if you um, feel free to just comment in this spot, in this uh, in this feed in general, um, and we'll go from there. And uh, it'll be it'll be a lot of fun like, like uh, all these other ones. So everybody stay safe, stay healthy, obviously stay optimistic, stay proactive. And, uh, you know, today, Whoa. tomorrow's a new day and things, things have been changing. Protect yourself. Have your vitamin C. There you go. All right, guys. See you. See ya.